arms or legs. Those are long, hard bones that aren't going to bend anywhere. And like I said, we might set them down. I don't think we'll go anywhere. Some of our other states, if we put them down, we're not going to get them back. Okay, so we're going to set him down that way. Maybe he, we can watch him move. Let's try to split it. It does. So he's going to stick his tongue out and he's going to smell his environment and check it out. You see him? He's moving along. He, his whole body, like I said, is one long muscle and he uses all of his special scales called scoops on his belly to scoot along or to slither forward. He's more fortunate than the one you have that doesn't have all that in his back. Oh, LJ, yeah. Okay, we'll bring him around one more time in case you want to touch him again. And then we'll be our relaxed animal. Do something fun. I like him because he has like a little face mask. You know? He can see a little mouse. We call them hoppers because they're not quite as large as other mice. But he eats once a week. If he grows a bit bigger, we try to give him a little bit bigger of a meal. So they can eat something as big around as his belly. But if the meal mouse is too large for them, if they can look at it and they're like, oh, that might be too large, then they won't eat. So we try to give them something that they can look at and say, okay, I can eat that. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> they are pretty smart. You want to touch him this time? You don't want to touch him, Misty? He's so soft. He's smooth. A lot of people think that snakes are slimy <laughs> because they're shiny from their scales. But they're actually not. They're nice and dry and smooth. Huh? Is that how you felt? Now, like I was saying earlier, snakes grow they're for their whole lifetime. They might slow down. But as long as they're eating, they're going to keep growing. And that's because their skin, they can reach shed it and shed it and shed it. And their skin can grow and grow and grow. But we don't shed our skin like they do. Our skin is stretchy and grows with us. So we almost have the same skin that we had when we were little. It's just stretched out. Okay, we have one more animal that we're going to bring out. And he is really cool. You have met him before, but. And he did get sick on the way here. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's this poor thing. Okay, yeah. What you see? Oh, it was the car ride. Sometimes, well, all the motion, especially if they're a bird. Covered up. Yeah, they get covered up. Or a bird. Our other bird, he can't go out of town because he gets sick if he goes out of town. But he's an in town bird. And this one, we're not going to get to touch either. That's because he's got to stay in his little carrier. If we get birds at usually a young age, or if they're trustworthy enough, then we can get it. we can teach our birds that we are the safe zone. But our bird leader, he never really learned that. So if he were to get spooked, if we had him out of his carrier and he were to get spooked, he would fly off. So that's why we're going to keep him in his carrier. We did bring some blueberries, which are his favorite, and he might eat one of them when he feels like it. Yeah, he is a toucanet, so a small toucan is what that what that word means. So we're gonna bring him around, and you'll just keep your hands to yourself because he might. I don't want you putting your fingers up by him. He is very bright and colorful. He does live in the rainforest. <laughs> yeah. He has a long beak, and that beak is to help him find fruit. And then he's going to hold on to the fruit and he uses his tongue to bore or poke a hole inside the fruit and then eats the fruit that way. His beak is very strong. Not quite as strong as some parrot beaks, but still really strong. And then two toucan beaks, he, they're much larger than he is and they have a really, really big beak. Can you imagine having a heavy beak like that? Can you imagine having a heavy beak on your head? You'd be walking around like this all the time because it'd be heavy. <laughs> What's he called? He's a toucanet. What? A toucanet. And the females of his species look very similar, but if you look at his back end, he has some red on his back end, kind of by his bum and his tail. And the females in him, his species, they won't have that red. And they're going to be a little bit more dull in color. And that's because females, they're the ones who are usually sitting on the nest 
and incubating the eggs, and they're going to be raising and feeding the babies as well. So they look uh, what people call more ugly, but that's because they're blending into their environment. So they're not quite as bright and colorful as the males are, but they still blend in. And males and bird species are bright and colorful because they gotta look good for the ladies. They gotta attract a female. Yeah. And many, many birds have very intricate and awesome mating dances. But I'm, if I'm right, he, his species doesn't really have a mating dance. So we're gonna try to feed him a blueberry. Because that blueberries are his favorite. We use them for training. He's white. No, he said there's too many people here. I don't want to everybody looking at me right now. I don't want to eat the product. You listen quiet, my hand. You want it? I guess so, huh? Do you give him stuff hard enough for him to pack into that you don't have to do anything to his bill? Grind it off or anything? Um, his beak does not grow like a parrot's beak okay. would. Uh, usually two canine beaks are going to grow to their full extent and stop. So oh, parrots the, grow out. Yeah. Right. Parrots grow out and they have to rub their beak to wear it down. He also rubs his beak on things, but usually like, when other birds like him rub their beak on things, they're clean. They're clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's going to rub his things to clean them. Also, a lot of times that's a sign of affection when birds rub their beaks on things. Him probably more so than like a normal bird, like a regular Texas bird. Okay, we'll bring him around again. He's probably not gonna eat his blueberry because he's checking everything out. Also, he might be a little stomach, yeah. tummy ache from wearing here. I wouldn't want to eat tummy ache. He got sick coming up here. He loves those blueberries. Now we we do something that's called targeting with our animals, and when we target an animal, that means that we have trained them to go to a certain spot, and we tell them a certain word, and then they go there and they're rewarded with a treat. So he gets rewarded with blueberries. He will eat those blueberries whole, the swallow them whole, and he will not eat the blueberry that he has unless he knows that there's another blueberry coming. <laughs> and if he accidentally eats that blueberry, not knowing that it was the last one he's going to get, he can actually regurgitate it back up. He can spit it back up and then hang on to it for a little while. <laughs> if he felt like it. It sounds like teenagers. <laughs> right? <laughs> And he's been very quiet. Mm -hmm. yes. I guess maybe he's coming to us. Puffing up his feathers for you. <laughs> okay. Yep, he has vocalizations. He's probably not going to do them now, but he does them a lot when we're when he's back home at the zoo. And he doesn't sound like a normal caw caw. It's more of a kind of a squawking kind of thing. Lots of different birds have lots of different sounds, and that's because, especially where he lives in the rainforest, there's so many birds. So they have to really make up their own different kind of sounds so that they can hear each other through all the all the bird noises, but also there's monkey noises, there's all different kinds of things. So yes. if he has a particular special sounding vocalization, then the females or the males of his species are gonna be able to pick that out and all that other noise. They don't warble like some of the birds do. No, he doesn't warble. Okay, we are gonna bring them around. Did you guys get hand sanitizer already? Yep, yep. perfect. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and pack up. Thank you guys for Thank having you. us again. Thank you. Yeah. Did you like seeing the animals? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to get them ready to go home then. Thank you guys. So You're welcome.